my name is Danson Matekwe Mboga uh, from the Republic of Kenya. And um, currently I'm working with the Kenya Organization for Environmental Education, which is the official fee chapter in Kenya and um, in charge of um, ESD, that is Education for Sustainable Education, Education for Sustainable Development. Um, first, I think my biggest inspiration has been the Green Key Initiative because um, it was my first professional engagement and um, there has always been need. We started it small and the need kept on developing. So I thought maybe because COVID came and the initiative had to stop, the need did not stop, the need is still there. So um, if we can go back into the criteria, I think that we have with Green Key International, then adopt it into the Kenyan culture and uh, mode of operation, then I think um, we can have something bigger and something better that can end up benefiting not just maybe the end point, which are the um, tourism establishments, but these are initiatives that needs to start in the downstream, um, then uh, in the upstream, going into the downstream. I am passionate about sustainability in the tourism industry. And um, Kenya being one of the leading tourism destinations in Africa, they need to incorporate a lot of um, sustainability initiatives within the tourism sector. In 2019, uh, the Kenya Organization for Environmental Education had the chance to manage the green key um, initiative in Kenya. And um, we did our best during that time. And we also had a lot of interest from many tourism stakeholders on their involvement uh, within the initiative. Sadly, in 2020, um, there was onset of COVID and the whole tourism industry came to a halt, which um, meant that um, we had now to somehow put the Green Key initiative into a hold until the situation gets better. Over time, since 2021, um, I've always been thinking of ways in which now we can start the Green Key back, like we can adopt it back to Kenya, but then how we can now make it more local, how we can involve more partners, and how we can make it like um, adopt to some of the traditions and maybe um, ways of life or for Kenyans. And that's why I thought it would be good for me to get some more ideas on the Gaia Fellowship of how sustainability can become a pillar um, in the tourism industry in Kenya. Uh, sorry for that too. So um, my vision is like um, to find some connections between the tourism establishments that include the hotels, uh, lodges, restaurants, and uh, maybe other accommodation sites and then connect them to the whole supply chain, starting with the farmer, um, to the person transporting maybe those goods and services, and then now finding how the supply chain, the hotel establishments, uh, the tourism establishments, can now find more benefits within the community in which they coexist. So be it maybe the schools that they are close by, be it um, some of the local population that is um, close to the hotel establishment. And also when you go back into the supply chain, starting from the farmer, how can they get some insights, some knowledge and some skills on how they can start um, initialize some sustainability initiative right from production into the transport. And also this um, initiative can now be continued and also replicated within the um, hotel and other tourism establishment. So 
the goal is to find a chain. It doesn't have to be like an end, but it has to be a process for me. And that's now what I'm envisioning with my project idea. Yeah, climate change is here. It's visible. It's with us and it's a challenge that I personally face on a daily basis. Being in Kenya and uh, Kenya also being hugely an agricultural um, nation. I'm also a part time farmer back in the village and um, where I come from in the western part of Kenya, the main food variety that we do is maize. So most of the time we have to combine maize and then beans. So over the years, um, the amount of produce has been in the decline. There is no year that ends and we can say that this year we've had a better produce than last year. It's a sad state of affair. And so this means that um, let's say if we have maybe, for example, 10 acres of land where we used to get like maybe 200 bags of maize, at the moment we end up getting like 50 bags of maize that's like a 75% decline in the amount of um, food that we used to produce in the same piece of land using mostly the same techniques. And um, all this now comes back down into the amount of rainfall that we are receiving. So the thing is uh, we mainly depend on rain fed agriculture and um, rainfall is also dependent on other factors such as maybe global warming. And at the moment, like in Kenya, the long rains normally start um, around March of each year up to somewhere in May. And over the years, we've been having like even just maybe a month only of rainfall. And that is making agriculture so unsustainable, affecting so many people, including me here. Um, the other thing I think that um, has personally affected me when it comes to environmental challenges is um, maybe the dust and um, some of the infections that are coming with it. Most of the time being in a city, a lot of dust due to erosion and also urbanization is um, increasing chances of people being affected by some of the um, uh, breathing challenges among other diseases and um, part of those people especially in this month now because the sun is too hot it's coaching so most of us are ending up getting a number of uh, diseases due to the dust um my first step will be coming up with like a community of stakeholders uh, that we share the same vision um, to like now nurture if, if maybe now we want to take back the initiative of Green Key, then it's going to be about bringing back the stakeholders and continuing with that movement that we had started. I know a lot has changed um, since 2020 up to now and um, we have to now keep at par with all these changes, but the most important thing will be first bringing, bringing out all the stakeholders into one table and continue the discussions that we had initiated back in 2019. Um, I think because my focus is more on sustainable tourism, it's about convincing establishments and owners of these establishments that um, sustainability is not just maybe about caring for the environment, but it's also about um, thinking about the long term survival of your business. And um, the other thing is that, you know, being sometimes in Africa, a lot of businesses don't necessarily think about the environmental aspect of it as opposed to um, the economic value that comes with the business. So for them, it's about how can we make more money 
as opposed to how can we like um, live in synergy with the community, with the environment, then make money. So I think that has to be the biggest challenge. It's about changing the mentality, having a paradigm shift um, to not just maybe the owners of these establishments, but also to the community themselves. If I want to go upstream and maybe think about the farmer, how can I pass that information to him or her in a way that um, they won't take it as maybe something that is going to add to their expense, of like um, how the cost of input and cost of production, but more on the impact that it's going to have within the whole chain. So I think that has to be the biggest challenge about mostly about changing mindsets. Um, my hope and goal has always been thinking about Africa as a sustainable continent. We know that um, we still have a number of uh, pristine ecosystems that have not been maybe so much um, affected by uh, climate change, pollution. Um, but um, if we are going to continue with the same trajectory that we are on, then it's posing a big challenge to the whole ecosystem. So my main goal is to think about business as a way of benefiting each part of the community and not just maybe the top. So it's about thinking about the ecosystem. It's about thinking about um, the community in which that uh, business is located. Then it's about now thinking about the economic value of that business. So I think that has to be my main goal. And also finding linkages between businesses and now the community and also businesses and other fee initiative. So if you are talking about Green Key, how can Green Key contribute maybe to the development of eco schools, of LEAF, of young reporters for the environment, and so on and so forth. The good thing is it's something I think that an idea that we had initiated before. And um, at the moment, it's about thinking of ways in which now we can bring it now back to life. So the main focus at the moment with my project is um, first learning the new dynamics in the market getting more knowledge and then after that it's now when I'm going now to focus on getting uh, more stakeholders. The other thing is at least that I have a supportive mentor. We've been in touch a number of times and I think that also makes it easier in case maybe I have challenges, I have some queries that um, need some more clarification. Um, she has been there at least to give a hand. And um, so far, I can say that we are on the right trajectory. Yeah, she's helpful. I know at some point last year, we all had like a busy schedules because we were coming to the end of the year. So there was a lot of reporting on both my side and her side. But um, we've come up with a plan on how we are going to have our communication. So I think we've had like two uh, meetings and uh, we've come up with a plan where we shall be having virtual meet, uh, meetings after every two weeks. And so I think that's a good start. And um, it also gives us time to think about the challenges we are facing because um, it's about learning also from each other. Uh, she just shared with me that um, she doesn't know so much about maybe Green Key, but uh, she has experience on sustainability. So it's about learning from each other. And I think that alone is going to help a lot. Also because now we've developed like a communication strategy on when to talk, what to talk about, because before each meeting we are going to have like um, an agenda of 
what we are going to talk about. So that is helping a lot. Yeah, of course. So my name is Grace McCatty uh, and I work for an organisation called Princess Trust International. Um, we are a charity that operates across the globe to support young people into education, employment and enterprise. Um, and I have the privilege of working as part of our sub-Saharan Africa team. Uh, so my work is predominantly focused um, on East Africa. So Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania, uh, where I'm one of the international programme managers supporting our work there. Uh, so we work with local delivery partners to support young people either getting back into education, improving education journey, entering employment or set up their own business. Yeah, for me, um, the reason I applied to be a Gaia Fellowship Mentor is an opportunity to support someone else on their journey. Um, I've been really fortunate on my journey, my career to date, that I've had mentors who have supported me um, in what they've done. They've shared their experiences and they've helped, I think, being a real positive soundboard to allow me to be check and challenge and grow in my journey. So for me, it was about give someone else the opportunity to, to support them on their journey. Yeah, so for me, um, the reason that myself and dancing and the collaborating um, was we had many very similar interests. As I touched on previously, a large focus of what I do is is in Kenya and in, in that geographical space. And that's where Danson lives and Danson works. So for me, when I saw his application, um, I saw his interest in the green space and the opportunity to do something sustainability wise. Um, it's something that I've also personally focused on this last year in my role. And the, I think the collaboration around the green economy and the green space and sustainability, as well as the fact that it was based in Kenya, was a definite draw for me. Um, it, it linked with two of the bigger interests I have, both personally and, and professionally. It was a good opportunity for us to collaborate together. Uh, for me, I, what, what definitely caught my attention with Dancer's project was that he had this idea um, that he wanted to bring to life. And for him, um, even despite COVID, COVID caused some challenges where actually, unfortunately, he wasn't able to maybe proceed as he had wished. He still kept going ahead with the project. So for me, it was, I think, not so, obviously, there's huge elements of the project itself that I was like, this sounds great um, around sustainable development and basically him to develop himself and, and particularly in sustainable tourism. And I think with COVID, COVID obviously affected not only that sector, but his ability to do what he wanted to do. But with his perseverance and his desire to go, actually, you know, we can still proceed with this. It definitely drew my attention to it because I think tourism is huge in Kenya. Um, it's huge. It's huge across the globe. And it was a huge sector that was hit heavily during COVID. Um, so I think for him, the opportunity to actually do something about this and create a, a business that actually operates in a way that not only benefits the environment and benefits the way they operate, but is successful as well, definitely drew my attention to his project. Yeah, so for me, I think um, any project that's particularly the tourism s sector or something that's focused on a product or something you're offering to other people, there's a huge challenge around you have to have that audience. You have to have that audience or that target market that wants to engage with it. I think we've obviously come through the pandemic now and whilst that has still affected the sector, it's definitely growing. So I think there's a challenge around actually one trying to re-engage with that sector. Um, people are sometimes quite hesitant to travel, potentially overseas still, and I think there might be potentially a challenge around that. And for me, I think two Doing that sustainably, which is obviously a huge focus of, of Dancer's project, is also another challenge because it's relatively new. Uh, we live in a world now, I think, that's more aware than ever around the challenges around the, the how things affect the environment. Is it environmentally friendly? Is it right for the environment? And I think whilst that is new, it still sometimes isn't the, the most cost effective way to do things. That's not to say it's in the right way. So I think for dancing, probably two of the biggest challenges, one, getting that target audience market right, um, particularly as people are maybe a little bit hesitant to, to engage with tourism post, uh, post COVID, but two, also then actually marketing in the right way that people might have to pay a little bit more or it might be a little bit more costly, but it's better for the environment. And I think the way that you, the dancer markets that is going to be a bit of a challenge, but when done properly, it can be successful. Yeah, for me, I think um, Dancer obviously has some, some big goals around can we set up a company? Can we do something that that provides a service? And for me, one of the things that, that, that's been great about the fellowship is actually one is about not just learning and networking, but it's about capacity building. So not only is Dancer developing himself for the here and now, he's also developing himself for the future, whether that be in a year, two years, five years, 10 years. Um, so for me, I think the biggest achievement is to get to the end of it and have a, have a company uh, potentially that 
works in the sustainable tourism that provides services to both Kenyans and, and across the field, that is it's, it's hugely successful. And I think for him, it's, it's a big goal. It's a big aim to work towards. But I think with small steps um, and small wins and doing things right now around like, can he start to engage with the Department for Sustainable Development? Can he start working with different Kenyan organisations? I think is a great way in getting there. Um, it's definitely not going to be an overnight success. Um, and everything he does now day to day obviously builds him towards that hopefully, which is the ultimate goal and ultimate outcome of, of setting up a company that, that operates in that space.